We're on now. Nathan. It's just me. Well, hi, everybody. Oh, there we go. I thought I was going to have some time just to, to shine. I thought this would be my moment. We we are bestest best friends now. It is here. staff on the call I mean there's even more I've got four people on the screen right now there's more than that here's one more here's two more we've got six, <laughs> six. Yeah, you're all on screen with us yeah you're all on screen I don't see Jess uh, is Jess joining us I, I think uh, maybe I need to send her the link again um, send her the link again she couldn't get on okay I'll send her a link again uh, but anyway yeah we're all excited to be here right now uh, thank you guys for joining us. This is the big payback. We are we are pushing. There she is. Jess is here. All right, we've got one more. Jess. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Um, so we're all in our like respective locations. I'm in my kitchen, um, and and Courtney is there with the. I don't know where you are. Your background is blurry, Courtney. It's fancy, and uh, and everybody's with us. Cheryl, your background's blurry too. I, we're we're just dealing with some fancy folks here tonight. But anyway. Um, right now, we're going to click over to uh, a video, the banquet video, what Mission Discovery does, uh, and and so uh, you'll get to know just a bit about Mission Discovery. And uh, Jimmy's got a huge update for us right after that, so we're going to click right over if I can find it. Uh, three, two, come and see. Here we go, the banquet video. Here we go. Let's check this out. In the book of John, we have this story about two disciples of John the Baptist. One day, as Jesus passed by, John declares, Look, there is the Lamb of God. And they immediately begin to follow Jesus. Noticing this, Jesus turns to them and asks what they are looking for. What an amazing moment. Jesus, the Son of God, asking, what are you looking for? And their answer is not exactly what you would expect. They say, Rabbi, where are you staying? They want to know where Jesus lived. They don't ask Jesus for anything. In essence, they simply ask Jesus if they can see where his home is. This might seem odd, but there is something there. This interaction is pointing deeper. A home is personal. It's intimate. A home cuts to the heart of who someone really is. 
When you invite someone into your home, you are inviting them to get to know the real you. The you that isn't filtered. The laundry on the floor, dirty dishes in the sink, real you. This is what the disciples are asking Jesus. They want to know who Jesus is. And knowledge always involves experience. To really know something is to see it for yourself. So Jesus doesn't tell his disciples who he is. He shows them. He invites them to come and see for themselves. To follow him and know him by experiencing him. So what about today? If those disciples were here, if they saw Jesus and asked him the same question, and if Jesus' answer was the same, if he said, come and see, where might that lead? Where would they go to see Jesus at home? I'm reminded of a phrase that I picked up in Northern Ireland where one of the uh, team leaders talked about thin spaces and that moment where it's like heaven and earth meet, those holy places that you, you just like, wow, God is here, God is present. Uh, in those moments, I believe, uh, is that sacred space because that's where God is and that's where God is moving and it's in joining Jesus in ministry joining Jesus in him the mission of the kingdom you experience the gospel you experience the spirit moving and I think it opens up the door to understand that we are called to something bigger we get to join Jesus in his ministry if you really want to know Jesus you know we read him in his word we we pray but I think it's joining him what he would have done. And we don't bring God to a place. God is there. God is moving. His spirit is there. And so I just get to join him in that spot. So when you say, come and see, it's recognizing it's way bigger than me. And it's in those thin spaces that we experience him. Those thin spaces it are those invitations to come and experience God because it's Jesus being there. And he's saying, come on, come meet me here. Come meet me in this orphanage. Come meet me in this community that is broken down and needs help. Come meet me. So um, I would say all of those moments, all of those places are those, those thin spaces, those moments that we, when we jump into it, we're like, oh, God is here. If this is your first time considering taking a trip, just do it. You need to do it. There is so much variety and color to the kingdom of God that you have not yet interacted with. And every part of you needs it, whether you believe it or not. So I really came into this blind, not knowing what I was getting into. And it was absolutely one of the best experiences of my life. And I would do it 10 times again. Um, it's something that I would encourage. <laughs> almost mandatory. You got to see for yourself. You do not need to have it all together to come on these trips. You just need to be willing and the Lord can do the rest. As always, Jesus is right in the middle of things. He is with his people in their joy as well as their pain. He's there offering grace and peace to all those who call on his name. And he extends that same invitation to us to know him by experiencing him. He invites us to come and see.
Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us tonight. It really is a special evening for us. Um, we never thought we'd find ourselves in this type of situation, but we take comfort in knowing that God's in control. So uh, I'm going to give you a great big welcome here. Thank you for being a friend, a fan, a supporter of Mission Discovery. Um, your prayers mean so much to us. So I just want to say thank you for joining us this evening. We've got a lot in store. You'll actually get to hear uh, Pastor Phil Long later this evening live on one of our uh, one of our sessions, and uh, probably some other people from video. I can't can't guarantee anything, but I do want to make a few announcements first. So um, let's keep those God sightings coming. We want to do those a little bit later this hour. So as we've done previously, go ahead and list your God sighting. Uh, in the comment section, and we'll have the staff review those, and uh, not for accuracy, just to review them and let you know that uh, we acknowledge that, and we will go through and we will read as many as we can, so please list your God sightings. We, we need that from you. And on a great news thing here, I have been informed that we have an anonymous donor that will match the first hour's gifts to one, $1.50 for every dollar that comes in. So your gift of $100 could be worth $250 to Mission Discovery through that simple act. So I would like for you to keep that in mind. Um, our donor has put a cap on this. So first come, first serve. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about donations in, uh, in the next few minutes. I'm going to take this session here and kind of give you a little background little story on Mission Discovery, but also let you know how we got to where we are today and what that means for us and what, how you can help us this time. Uh, first of all, I want to acknowledge that I'm rocking my very old school Mission Discovery denim shirt. For those of you that can't can see that, it's right there. Now, the good thing is I've kept this so long, it's back in style. My wife said denim's cool again, so uh, I'm pretty good about that one. Uh, so, um, you know, you keep it long enough and it always comes back, boys and girls. Uh, so keep your Mission Discovery shirts. You never know when Michael will start recycling Gen 2 of some of those older shirts. It, it could happen. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Mission Discovery started in 1991. Uh, it was a dream and a passion of a good friend of mine, Maury Buchanan, and his desire was to take youth leaders on mission trips. Uh, he thought the biggest he'd ever be was probably 600 people on trips during the course of a year. Um, that got blown away pretty quick. So um, we've had ups and downs. We've, we've done mission trips every summer since and throughout the year since 1991. But we knew, do know, excuse me, we do know that this summer is going to be very different. Um, we're all struggling right now with the effects of the pandemic that's going on. The coronavirus has thrown a huge curveball. Uh, we have prayed for many, many of our friends out there who've been impacted by this. Some are, are physically sick uh, with the virus, but most of our friends have suffered the effects of the virus. And by that, I mean either, either job loss or quarantine or uh, being where they can't be around anybody. It's, it's extremely difficult for people who live alone. Uh, during this time right now. So our thoughts and our prayers go with them. But uh, this has also impacted mission discovery. Um, it looks like for the first time in 28 years, I will be home for the month of June. And that's not, that's not anything I say happily. Uh, it's very sad. But um, currently we have canceled just about every June trip. There is a possibility of one local trip taking place. But um, we have canceled uh, five in the spring because of coronavirus. And um, now we're working on June trips and next week we'll start working on July trips. So uh, this is very troubling to us. But the fact is that this is an unprecedented event that's taking place. It's not just mission discovery, it's all of us. We're all in this together. But we take confidence because we know that God is in control. This didn't catch him by surprise. He's not up there wringing his hands, thinking, you know, what am I going to do next? How am I going to figure this out? Uh, he's perfectly at peace. So we, as a staff, 
have opted for that same option. We're going to be in peace about this. We know God's got control here. Um, we have uh, walked in his ways. We follow what he's called us to do. We're going to keep doing that. So um, what we like to do is take this time with you and just let you know the impact of not having any summer trips this summer. Um, that could be the case. We may have a minimal. I'm, hope, I'm hoping for that. Uh, like I said, we still haven't decided about July. But um, if we have no trips this summer, uh, some of our early projections say we could be somewhere up around $100,000 in the hole. Um, so we're working to correct that. Um, you know, really, when you have things like that going on, <laughs> You either decrease expenses or increase revenue. So we're doing both. Um, and that's where you come in. We are uh, looking for you to help us with the increased revenue. Um, the Community Foundation has done this for, uh, I believe, seven or eight years, possibly nine years. And they've always invited us to be part of the big payback. But as many of you know, May is a very busy time for us. Most of us are out on the field prepping for summer trips. Well, this May and April and most of March, we were all home. So Stephanie Cook, who you'll meet in a little bit, is going to give you a little bit more information about how she spearheaded the project of getting Mission Discovery on board uh, for the big payback. And uh, as many of you know who have tuned in with us before, Nathan and Michael have played a key part in our live events, which also tie into this as well. But, um, you know, right now, uh, I want you, if you don't, if you're able to, uh, to take your device or if you're watching on a phone or a computer and go to the site that is labeled bigpayback.org slash mission discovery. And I'm going to reach up here and show you what that site should look like. Oh. There it is. So if you're trekking with me, your site should look something like this. It should say the big payback. And then uh, since you put slash mission discovery, it'll take you right to our page. You can donate right here on the page. Uh, there's a donate button up at the top. Uh, it says donate now. But here's the sneaky thing. If you scroll to the bottom, you'll see campaigns right down here. And many of our staff and our friends have started campaigns. We actually have campaigns that were started, one in Montana, one in Wisconsin, and one in Arkansas, as well as from the staff. So um, our fans are helping us raise these funds, too. So we're very grateful for that. But... If you'll look through those campaigns, many folks have opted to um, match funds. So as you read the campaigns, you can read through who's offering to match funds. So not only do we have somebody giving one and a half times the gift, but if we really hit hard this first hour, we could do some really good damage in a good way. Um, uh, we could do some really good help for Mission Discovery. Um, so uh, many of the folks have decided to give uh, through their campaign that they would match funds. So you would just tap somebody's picture, whether it's Cheryl or Jen, uh, Jennifer Weakling. You can uh, you hit the button that says show all the campaigns and it's right there and it'll take you to the next page and all the campaigns are listed there. Um, if you just want to know something a little sneaky, we already got some money in. Um, so we started out with a, with a nice cushion. No, I'm not going to say cushion. We started out with a nice thin pad of uh, gifts that got us launched and ready to go today. So um, the matching campaigns are huge. If you'll do me a favor and read through those and see if there's one you'd like to give to, you can give to Mission Discovery in general, but you can also give on the campaign page and that will help folks uh, just, just achieve a goal. You know, all this money comes to Mission Discovery. Um, you can read there. It tells you how, um, tells you how the community foundation will disperse money, uh, what the fees are for and that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, I do just want to say to you, thank you so much for joining us. This is an unprecedented time. You know, our hearts go out to the folks out there that are suffering. Um, and again, like I said earlier, this is not anything any one person did. 
we are going through this together and we will come through this together. We know that God's faithful. Um, I talked, I think it was just last Thursday I talked about uh, the, the story of the fish, the parable, uh, the story of the, the five loaves and the two fish. And uh, I'm not going to say that again, but if you miss that, the gist of that talk I did was really that what little bit we have in the master's hands, amazing things happen with five loaves and two fish. It's just hard to believe what he can do when a, a young child, you might get the chance to see just his son Mason on the screen, cutest little boy I've ever seen. Um, he is able to do amazing things when we bring our five loaves and two fish, what we think is insignificant, what we think is not enough, what we think won't make a difference, we bring that to him and God does amazing things. So I'd like to thank you for joining us tonight. We've got a lot of events planned. Um, I'm going to give you an update towards the end of the hour fine, to let you know how our first hour went. Uh, we're hoping to use those matching funds, the, the one and a half times funds, this first hour. And then the campaigns will also be available to match as well. But you know, thank you. It just means a lot that you took time to be with us. And uh, I think we're going to turn back now to the rest of the staff and um, maybe either read through some of the comments or uh, start getting our staff check in. So you will be able to meet the Mission Discovery staff here. I know many of you have either talked to or usually talk to either Stephanie or Jessica on the phone. Uh, you'll get to put a face with that name. Cheryl Milnes is on the line as well. She's not only a staffer, she's a board member and a project coordinator. She does a lot. And this is only one of her jobs. She still has another job. Uh, Courtney and Michael, Nathan and I are here. So um, let's let's open it up to the rest of the staff. Or Nathan, we want to read some comments first. Yeah, I mean, either way, I, I, um, I'm I looking for Steph. I don't see Steph on here anymore. I think she must have had to go or something like that. But uh, do you guys see her on your Skype there, Stephanie? Nope. Oh, no. Uh, so, all right then. Jimmy, yeah, uh, we can look through. I know that we had uh, mentioned about God sightings earlier. So uh, for those of you who are just joining us, maybe even for the first time, uh, mission discovery. Every mission trip that we do, every night that we meet, we come together and we ask each other, how have we seen God today? And so uh, we've been asking each other that uh, as a staff. We've been asking Michael and I ask that every day uh, uh, with our devotional people, just how have mm -hmm. we seen God today? And so uh, so we'd love for you to, uh, and I'll add it right, right back to the broadcaster, how have you, how have you seen God recently? Um, so uh, just put those in the comments there and we'll go back and read those. It's just a way for us to kind of check in with each other and just, you know, uh, if God's doing something, we want to know about it so that we can thank him and, uh, and praise him. And I know that like in the middle of a pandemic, uh, people need to hear that kind of thing more than ever uh, right now. So, um, yeah. So anyway, uh, we're all here together. This is some of the Mission, Di Mission Discovery staff. Uh, we're waiting on one more, and, and there are a few more that won't be joining us tonight. But it sure is good to see everybody that's uh, that's on this uh, on this broadcast. I do know uh, Pastor Leroy from Jamaica was on earlier. Uh, he may still be on. Pastor Leroy, it's always good to see you. Um, let's see here. I'm just looking through the comments here. Um, making sure uh, that you guys can hear me. I know Melissa DeBoix, or Dubois says that she couldn't hear me earlier, so I want to make sure that you guys still hear me. Let me know. Uh, and anyway, uh, so this is our Mission D Discovery staff, some of them. Uh, Courtney, we have a big segment with you tomorrow. Uh, Michael, when is that? What time is that tomorrow? Uh, we're we're going to meet with Courtney around 1... No, sorry. 2.30 in the afternoon. Okay. And, uh, and that's awesome. And Steph miraculously appeared out of nowhere. It's like the, the story where Jesus just comes through the wall and appears, you know, after he's resurrected. And Steph, you just did that. That's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> um, so Courtney uh, will be joining us tomorrow at sometime 2.30, you said, Michael, about that? Yeah, 2.30. Awesome. Uh, Courtney's uh, face is frozen on my screen. Looks like she's frozen on uh, Facebook, too. So, uh, And it's a face of, like, <laughs> yeah, everybody try to... <laughs> 
face of surprise. I th she was about to correct you, Michael, because you said one something, and she goes, uh, I think not. So um, that's what that face is. So anyway, if, uh, and if you're just joining us too, we are doing 24 hours of live streaming. You may think that that's crazy, and, and here's the thing. It is. I agree with you 100%. <laughs> it is crazy. Who came up with that idea? Yeah, Michael Neff had the genius idea to live stream for 24 hours straight during the big payback. Courtney, you're not frozen anymore. That's awesome. And uh, and we were like, man, that's, I, in my heart, I was saying, that sounds awful. And everybody else was like, that's awesome. Let's do it. So here we are. Uh, <laughs> uh, this is what we're going to do. Uh, we've got ministry partner check-ins coming up. I know tonight at 8 p.m., Myra from Guatemala is going to be checking in with us. Um, and then we've got tons more. Yeah, I know. If you've been here uh, with to Guatemala with us, you don't want to miss that. Um, we've got uh, some from Pastor Noel uh, and just a few more. Phil, who's on here tonight, Phil from Tacoma, uh, checks in with us as well. So, But anyway, uh, this is the big payback. Mission Discovery needs your help. Uh, click on that link in the comments, mission, uh, thebigpayback.org backslash mission discovery, and, uh, and go uh, give your heart out right now. You know what I'm saying? So this is some of our staff, and who wants, we just want to hear a little story about how you got involved with mission discovery, what mission discovery means to you, and I'm going to click over, let's go Steph, you're it. <laughs> it's me, it's me. Yeah. 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 Hold on. Um, yeah, hold on a yeah. second. I told my grandkids if they would tune in tonight, I'd give them a shout out. So, hey, Anna and Laura. Anna and Laura. Anna and Judy. <laughs> Thanks for joining in. Happy <laughs> love you. All right. They, they also want to give you a lot of cookies next time you're over there. That's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Grandparents are really good at that. Right. <laughs> They really are. Um, I'll shout out to my parents who are uh, grandparents to my kids, and they're on here as well. So thank you all for tuning in. Um, I'm Stephanie Cook, and I'm the administrative director at Mission Discovery. Um, I have been at Mission Discovery for uh, almost 17 years. I cannot believe it's been that long, um, but I love it, and for time to get rid of me, I think. Um, I started out as a youth, as a lot of our bring along on trips. I went on mission trips in high school and in college that fueled a passion for missions and for serving others. And uh, now I get to do it as a day job, which I love. Um, we uh, have been in lots of different places and served in lots of different ways. One of my favorite ways to serve on mission discovery trips is as a cook, um, which a lot of people would not like that. But it is one of my favorite ways to look off of everyone's schedule. Um, you wake up really early in the morning and it, there's nothing like a happy fed camper <laughs> and staff um, and, and knowing that you were a part of that as you they go out into the workplace for the day and serve others. And um, so that's one of my favorite ways to serve. Um, now that my kids are a little older, I kind of feel like I've grown up with Mission Discovery. When I first started, um, my husband and I were newlyweds. We'd only been married for a couple of years and now we have three daughters and those kids have served with Michael in Fort Blackmore. Um, and then we've served with Nathan in, uh, I served with Nathan in um, Jamaica and Hugh Sullins in Jamaica. Lucy went with me to Jamaica. And then most recently Reese was with me in Puerto Rico um, for her 10th birthday. So we uh, are fans and love Mission Discovery. Um, we would appreciate you guys coming on trips with us. I love to get family and friends involved. Um, my parents and my sister and my brother um, have all been on Mission Discovery trips. And Andy's family has cooked with me on a couple of different trips and cousins. And um, man, we just we just want everybody to experience Mission Discovery because they're just so they're such a fantastic organization and with a heart to serve and lead others um, towards Christ. Uh, so that's a little bit about me, probably more than you wanted to know, but Hey, ask me questions in the comments. I'll be glad to answer. Hey, Steph, just talk about your, uh, the push for the, the big payback and how you kind of spearheaded yeah. that. 
you for us. Sure, sure. Yeah. So when we started, um, I have had the big payback on my radar for several years. They send me an email about January or February every year asking if we want to be involved. And I always threw it out to the staff and it was always like, I, I don't know that we can, we have the time uh, to do it. And I don't really, I didn't really know what time was, um, uh, sorry, dog. Uh, <laughs> uh, I didn't really know what, what uh, time allotment was going to entail for the big payback. Um, so we always just kind of set it aside because it was going to be a busy time in May uh, with set up trips and uh, payments of trips coming in and those types of things in the office. Um, when the quarantine began uh, back in mid mid March, um, I kind of I got one of those emails and I thought this is the year. This is the time. Uh, this could be a really big deal for Mission Discovery. And so we kind of pushed it through. A lot of nonprofits spend their whole year um, preparing for this. This is a, a big deal for them. And uh, we had like four weeks. <laughs> um, so we have worked very, very hard. Nathan and Michael have worked really hard. Jess, as we're, all of us have really just kind of come together to try to give this uh, event uh, wings and a push. We're excited about being able to do something that we've never done before. We're learning through this event, as all of us are, being at home, changing schedules, changing routines. Um, God is... Uh, showing us things about ourselves through this process that we just didn't even know were uh, part of his plan for us. And I'm just really excited to be able to be a part of it this year. I hope that the time that we've spent um, this year during a kind of down season will be able to um, we'll be able to use what we've learned and use the things that we've created for this year's big payback in years to come. So I'm excited to be a part of it. I'm excited to join together with other nonprofits in Middle Tennessee and beyond and um, just give back to the community in a way, in a new and fresh way. So other other questions, anybody? <laughs> Bada bing. Yeah, I'm trying to look at all the comments everywhere. So it's kind of like, Steph, thanks so much. I know that uh, it's been a lot of hard work on and a lot of work on your plate to, to pull this off. Like you said, there's a lot of organizations that plan on this and this is a huge deal for them for the year. And we just decided, hey, uh, literally a lot of our trips, I can't say all of our trips, but a lot of our trips uh, are canceled. We can't, you know, uh, a lot of our donations are not coming in. Uh, we have to pull a Hail Mary here and pull it together quick. So, uh, so that's why that's where Michael came up with this 24 hour idea for, for live streaming. Um, Michael, you're a genius or something like that. Um, <laughs> so, uh, and it's going to be awesome. It really is. We've got a lot of really yeah. cool things coming up and, and I'm really excited about it. Why don't we go to Jess? So we have, uh, so, so Steph, is uh, is an admin. She works in the office all the time. Uh, she's extraordinary. She you probably heard her voice if you've ever called Mission Discovery. But the other person that you've probably heard is Jess, and she's here tonight too. Jess, how are you? I am good. How where's, are you? Where's Mason? My brother um, is watching him for me. Oh, okay. In the gotcha. next few minutes. Yeah, <laughs> I, I texted him. I'm like, um, can you come over? We well, we miss him. <laughs> Yes. I know he's sweet, but yeah. also loves crawling everywhere. So yeah, yeah. How old is he? Yes, he is going to be 14 months soon. 14 so he's just over old. a year. Yeah. So tell us Which about Mission easy. Discovery. Tell us about. Uh, I know you've been on a few trips with us, but you've also been in the office taking care of like a lot of the back end things that nobody sees. And I know that me personally, I've been on trips where people have, have sang your praise and said, you know, I've spoken to Jess, uh, you know, and so thankful for all of her help, you know. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so um, I'm Jess. I was born and raised um, in Los Angeles County in California. And my husband and I moved here to Tennessee, um, I think almost three years ago now. Um, which that feels like a long time. So that's crazy. Um, and I started working for Mission Discovery 
um, a few months after we moved here. So I think it was like in the fall and I was just looking for jobs online and I saw Mission Discovery and looked at the website and I just loved what Mission Discovery was doing and what it stood for um, and all that. So I applied and I'm so grateful that I was hired. Um, so yeah, I've really enjoyed working um, with Mission Discovery for the last couple of years. Um, I do just a lot of administrative work, which is what I enjoy doing. So it's kind of fun that um, I can do administrative work with like-minded people and um, for God's glory, which you could do regardless, but uh, it's, it's more special this way, I guess. Um, so yeah, just answering questions about trips, helping people get signed up, um, trying to make sure the project coordinators have everything they need for their trip, um, all those kinds of things. And I used to be full-time, but when my husband and I had our baby a year ago, I went down to part-time, which has made things interesting. So definitely trying to take full advantage of all the hours I can spend um, working because my attention is definitely split now. Yeah. So which is a, a blessing, so. Yeah, and you're here at like, in in Tennessee, it's 638 right now. Definitely outside of working hours. So uh, thank you for, for being here, Jess. This is awesome. We know your yeah. your dedication to the team, and we uh, we couldn't do it without you, so thank you. Um, yeah. Hey, uh, hey, Courtney. I know that uh, that you are have had quite a wild journey with Mission Discovery. Tell us about it. <laughs> well, first of all, hello to all of the friends and family tuning in. There are so many of you um, that I haven't necessarily talked to in a little while, but I see you signed on to watch. So thank you guys so much for being here. That just means a lot and is really, really awesome. We appreciate it. Um, but for those of you that maybe don't know me, my name is Courtney Rivera. Um, I had the privilege of first joining the staff of Mission Discovery in 2014. However, my Mission Discovery journey began long before that. Um, I went on my first mission trip with Mission Discovery when I was about eight years old. Um, just a little kid on a family mission trip with my parents and my two brothers. Spent basically the summer down in Mexico helping out teams down there. And um, really kind of grew up going on Mission Discovery mission trips and enjoyed every bit of it. Um, so throughout my young adult years in college, just trying to navigate where to go and what to do next, um, I just really ended up feeling the Lord calling me into full-time missions. And I'm so grateful that I was able to join the staff of Mission Discovery in 2014. Um, at that time, I joined the staff as one of our project coordinators. Um, I am still one of our project coordinators, and I do lead mission trips, um, usually to Jamaica. I do a lot of our local Nashville mission trips, and then some of our Haiti and Guatemala trips that are related to Hold the Children, um, because in 2018, I took over as the director of our Hold the Children Child Sponsorship Program. Yeah. Um, so that program has been around since the year 2000. Um, but the previous director retired in 2018 and I got to take over at that point. And so I um, have a bit of a new role. I still am a project coordinator, but my main focus is hold the children. Um, through that program, we have about 12 different schools. Nine of them are in Haiti, two are in Jamaica, and one is in Guatemala. And then also through Hold the Children, we have an orphanage on the northern coast of Haiti. Um, so I get to oversee the operations of all of that and, and um, you know, try to keep people informed about their sponsor children and their donations and fun things like that. Um, but I really enjoy my job a lot. I'm so, so grateful for all of the people that continuously give um, to make not only the ministry of Mission Discovery possible, um, but also the ministry of hold the children. I'm kind of getting word that my video is freezing up, so I apologize for that, but hopefully you can still hear me. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about me and um, how I got involved with Mission Discovery in the first place and what I do now. Um, thanks for being here for the big payback. It means a lot to us and we're really hopeful that um, mm -hmm. this big push of a fundraiser will kind of help get us through this valley of 
canceled mission trips that we find ourselves in. Yeah, Courtney, it's funny when you said, I think my video's frozen up, it unfroze. I don't know how that happens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, uh, but suddenly we just lost Jimmy, so there's something else. It, you know what? This thing is, uh, this, this whole thing, the learning curve of all of the technology that it takes to pull this off is uh, pretty, pretty awesome. And uh, just thank, thank goodness we've got a full staff that supports everyone that uh, we can kind of pull this thing together. So, mm -hmm. purpose. I purposefully cut my video. Oh, okay. Yeah, I you, had a cough. You don't, have, you don't have to tell us why. Oh, okay, a cough. Okay, yeah. a cough. Good. Uh, Cheryl, <laughs> how are yes. you? Yeah. Why don't you tell us tell us your mission discovery story? Okay, back in two thousand and three, I uh, was a ministry assistant at Umbrook Church, our church here in Brookfield, Wisconsin. And I coordinated the trip for 72 middle schoolers. And I, I got to go with them on that trip. Um, I don't think we lost anybody. And we were able to we fly from here down to Texas. We had a layover, and it was great. Everybody made it. And uh, I just felt so blessed on that trip. It was amazing. It was the first mission trip I had ever been on, and I, I got so much more from it than I was doing to the students, to the people we were serving. I determined the next year I was going to bring some of my children. So my son came with me the next year, and I think two years after that, I brought my daughter, and I just kept going on mission trips. Um, I, I, not sure. It was probably about 10 years ago. I was, they, they found out, Jimmy and Mari found out that I was a CPA. So they asked me to go on the board and I went on the board and it was, it was so awesome. I um, really enjoyed giving back and using my accounting skills. I was supposed to roll off the board probably about three or four years in, and I asked if I could stay on and still on the board. Two years ago, uh, Jimmy asked if I would do some remote accounting work, so I do that also. But um, this last year, my husband and I got to uh, go to Jamaica, and I was the project coordinator for the first time, and it was awesome. Every year, I want to go back. To Jamaica and just do it with my husband and um, hopefully down the road I'll bring some more of our family and grandchildren and have them discover God's incredible world and incredible people that are in all these different countries and places and the joy of serving. I do have a counterpart in uh, Tennessee that does the accounting and I'm gonna see if I can pull up her picture because she is not here tonight. While you're pulling that up, Cheryl, let me just yeah. say as a parent of two middle school girls, God bless you for the <laughs> 70 middle schoolers. I can't even imagine how fun and crazy and chaotic. It was crazy. And smelly. Yeah. Let me just say <laughs> it, it was it was nerve wracking because we were on two different planes and just to make sure everybody got there. And it, it, but it was a lot of fun. Yeah, and Cheryl, here, I don't know. Can you see Jeannie? No, she, we, we got her right here. This is it. Oh, you got her yep, right there. Yep, I found okay. her picture. There she is. That's great. That's yeah. Jeannie. That's and Jeannie. She just, she okay. does the accounting down in uh, Tennessee. She is really great at it. If uh, you have any questions, Jeannie can come up with the answer. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And some of the time she's even right. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, okay. So, Michael, 
Uh, it's it's down to you and me, but just real quick, Nathan. while we're while we're all here, I just want to say thank you everybody for joining tonight. I know that this is taking some time out of your evening, and uh, but but right now is just a really important time. This shows you uh, how important this time is right now that everybody's here because uh, Mission Discovery just really needs everyone on board right now. Uh, Mission, I, I like to say we need to keep our lights on. Really, what I mean is we need to keep the ministry running. Um, our ministry partners, and you will see this. I mean, we've checked in with, uh, I think a total of five ministry partners that'll be rolling, uh, tomorrow. And even tonight at 8 PM, our ministry partners depend, depend on us. They depend on, uh, especially hold the children, uh, the, 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 uh, the support that, that we are able to get through, hold the children to the schools that, uh, that these kids get, they're getting education. Um, and so, and, and also like the teams that come, our, our, our ministry matters to our uh, our ministry partners who are in Guatemala, Mexico, Jamaica, um, just all over. So, uh, so if you uh, if you're here right now and, and you've been a part of Mission Discovery, or even if you don't know who we are, uh, just head on over to uh, the link that's in the comments right now. It's missiondiscovery.org backslash or slash. I don't know which one it is. Uh, the big uh, uh, mission. What is it? Forward, forward slash. slash. All right. The big, what is it? The big pay, the big payback.org forward slash mission discovery. And that's where you'll find uh, how to donate right now. And really we, this is a, this is, this is exactly why we're here. It's why we're uh, live streaming for 24 hours. It's because we're all passionate about the ministry that we're a part of. And so uh, Michael, tell us how you got involved in mission discovery. Oh, is it, is it my turn for that? Yeah. 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 I gave you All plenty right. of time to think about the answer too. You, so <laughs> you did well, and and I've had I've had plenty of time in between that first trip and and right now to think about it. And you know, as I was listening to some of our friends, uh, staff members, board members, uh, there's there's a running theme which is you you dip your toe into the waters of of missions and specifically mission discovery, and then uh, very quickly you just kind of uh, get get consumed and just uh, want to do more, and that turns into more, and and that's really what my story has been about. Was I went when I was 13 years old on my first trip. Um, I had a friend. His name was Ben Buchanan, and his dad had actually started this thing called Mission Discovery. And so he asked me if 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 I would like to go down for a week and build a house in Mexico. And, and I just, you know, as a 13 year old kid, I was like, man, going to Mexico sounds cool. And maybe getting away from my parents for a while sounds kind of cool. And so I went and, and, uh, I didn't really think a whole lot of, of it, but then, um, just, it started becoming a yearly thing. I would go down. Um, and then in college I interned with mission discovery for whole summers down in Mexico. And then out of college, I got a, a call from Maury Buchanan, who was at, at that time was the president. And, and he just said, hey, what do you think about, you know, making this more of a, a long term, um, you know, career? And uh, and I just said, that sounds that sounds perfect. So uh, and that was um, that was like 13 years ago. The, that I came on on staff with Mission Discovery full time, so it's it's been it's been great. You know, I I am a project coordinator, so I I, I get to go out on projects, run projects, um, and then I do a lot of our design work. I design the shirts and do video editing and and come up with crazy ideas like streaming for twenty four hours. Um, so uh, it's it's you know it's it's been a it's been a great ride and I'm excited for for what the future holds and what tonight and tomorrow is all about is the future of Mission Discovery and how everybody that's watching everybody that has been a supporter in the past uh, this is the time to really um, help us make sure that the Mission Discovery can keep going can continue doing the awesome things that that we all know that the Lord does through Mission Discovery so. Um, hopefully, hopefully that was long enough for you, Nathan. That's great. In fact, we have, uh, very, very little time left, yeah. uh, for right now. And so, um, my computer is wigging out on me. 
and uh, it's yelling at me because I think it just loves you guys so much that it, it wants to see more of you. I don't know <laughs> what's happening here. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I I don't want to take too much time. Uh, I know we, we have... We could we could always ask you like at a and a in a future you know like Ooh. leave leave them a little bit yeah leave a little Dang. Easter egg there yeah because we still have to do um, we still have to do God sightings and I and we have like four minutes to do that uh, but I, yeah. I'll I'll share my God sighting right now uh, there you go as we're online right here what I did I I set up a campaign the other day for this event you know for my and I, as we're online right now I hear a ding ding ding. And I get an email that says, Melissa Dubois has donated to my campaign. Melissa, I know you're watching uh, because you always are. <laughs> and I just thank you so much. And you have a couple God sightings in here too. I'll search for those. But if any of you guys uh, on staff want to look through the comments and find some God sightings, we'll, we'll start sharing those right now with each other. Anybody have one right off the bat? Brenda Terpstra. Yeah, uh, sure. She said, um, uh, it's so good to see all of you. Mike and I love, love, love Mission Discovery. We have not been called to go on a mission trip for several years. And honestly, we miss it. And you guys, one of my recent God sightings is our new grandson, Nash. Love the name. Yeah. Uh, Mike and I have also been blessed because our plumbing, HVAC, and electrical business has stayed busy through all of this. That's, that's a great God sighting. So Brenda, we love you and, uh, and miss you as well. Here's another one from a fan of mission discovery, somebody named Nancy Neff. Ooh. <laughs> I love cooking for youth groups, going to places like Reynosa, Mexico and Fort Blackmore. So rewarding. Praying that your trips would open back up soon. Thank you, Nancy. Thanks. And guys, Thanks, we've got to get Michael out of the office. So, yeah, let's get these trips opened up back soon. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, I'll share one from Melissa because, uh, because I just mentioned her. She says, my husband Jason has a job interview tomorrow. Praise God for that opportunity. That's awesome. That's really cool. We'll be praying for you, Melissa. Anybody else have anything? I think we lost yeah, I Stephanie. I've got one here yeah. from the president of our board, Mr. Hugh Sullins, is tuning in. And he said that his God sighting is seeing all of the Mission Discovery staff tell their incredible stories. So thank you for that, Hugh. Nice. Anybody else? So as of right now, we're up to uh, 4650 in donations. Very That's nice. Awesome. Very so, nice. Keep them coming. Keep them coming, ladies and gents. You know, here's the thing. We're going to be doing this for 24 hours. So if you're not tired of us yet, you probably will be. So you're now's ready. the time just to hit that button. Yeah. <laughs> so you can just now and forget then. about tuning in ever again. <laughs> you can just hit it now. Uh, that's, but Nathan, they, they would miss all the good stuff that we have planned. What, what stuff do we have planned, Michael? Well, um, I, what are we doing next hour? That's that's my first question. Are we replaying this first hour? We're yeah, we're gonna come back to this because I think people need to see what's up and what's happening. Yeah, we're gonna come okay. back to this. But yeah. then after that, we're gonna talk schedule. We're gonna talk to uh, Phil Long out in Tacoma. We're gonna check in with Myra and get some worship from Nathan Bryant. That's all coming up tonight. Um, so that's that's a, that's that we've just packed. The next couple hours with just awesome stuff. Yeah. And then um, one of my favorite things that's happening, and hopefully he's still watching, is tomorrow morning, 9 a.m., Coffee with Maury. Ooh. Uh, let's, let's, let's just, let's everybody get a cup of coffee, 9 a.m., join us, because we're yeah. going to be, ta we're going to be asking Maury lots of, lots of tough questions. I Come get pajamas. Come in your robe and your pajamas and your <laughs> cup of coffee. Ooh, yikes. Do we have to wear robe and pajamas? Come on, I wasn't I wasn't aware of this. Uh, so the thing is, as uh, I have a story that I'll wait to share. Um, it's so remember, Michael, we were talking about making this like a French press coffee, just like all, you know, our coffee yeah. with more is always French press. So I'm, I, I and I've got a story about my French press coffee. I'll share tomorrow morning with uh, with with Maury and you and oh. everybody that joins. So, um, but yeah, I mean, this, this is going to be great. W. Huh? We've been saying Melissa's name wrong. What is it? <laughs> It's it's uh, Dubuque, phonetically. I knew that. I was just following your lead, man. Someone else. 
<laughs> Someone else told me. I don't know. No, I'm, I was kidding. I, I totally was saying it wrong. Dubuque. Okay. Melissa. Uh, sorry about Thank that. You. Sorry. <laughs> we are, we're still your friends and we love you very much. So, uh, guys, this has been fun. I have to like go figure out how to replay this real quick for everyone that missed it. So, so, um, so real quick, next hour is, is just a replay of this. Then, then at 8 p.m. Well, kind of, because at 8 p.m., there will be a Myra. So the people that watch this next, it's not going to be a, a replay. It's going to be talking with Myra. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. So. Um, All right. But yeah, 8 p.m. Myra, and that's going to be awesome. If you've been to, to Guatemala with us, you will love that. So. All right. All Anybody right. have any closing remarks? No. All right. Well, it's good to see you guys. Good to see you, staff, and uh, and uh, we're. We might call you tomorrow if we get bored and, and need somebody else to talk to. So keep your phones on and your Skype open and stuff like that. So, um, all right, we'll see. You, we'll see you guys later. Bye, everybody. everybody Twenty-four thanks, hours. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah, we'll be back. We're coming back. Don't right, forget. Right, yeah, we're coming back in one minute. So, <laughs> <laughs> we'll, yeah, we'll see you guys. <laughs>